Anna Capello was born in 1906 in Alvignon, a tiny village 28 miles north of the port city of Naples. Little is known of her childhood in Italy, but when her mother died, her father entrusted her to the care of cousins while he made the journey to America to seek work. It wasn't until 1915, with Italy in the midst of the First World War, that her father Fernando was able to send for her and two cousins. They arrived at Ellis Island on June 18, and from there her widowed father brought her to a small apartment at 319 Webster Street in Schenectady. It was here that she was reunited with her older brother Pasquale, whom she affectionately called Patsy. Like many children of Italian immigrants, Anna's schooling was brief. With the equivalent of a fifth-grade education, just enough to grasp the rudimentary workings of a new language, she quit school and went to work. Her father owned a small restaurant and bar in West Albany, and it was here that Anna went to work with an older sister. A frequent customer to the restaurant was a railroad man, Sam Antonio. When Anna and her father relocated to 53 North J Street in the Little Italy section of Schenectady, Sam followed. Of the few suitors she claimed to have had in her teenage years, Anna recalled that her father disapproved of just one, Sam Antonio. The friction between father and daughter led Anna to run away. She went to City Hall, obtained a marriage license, and then boarded the train with Sam, bound for Clyde. On February 22, 1922, Sam and Anna exchanged vows at the Methodist Church in Clyde. Reverend Leslie Farnsworth never questioned why the couple chose his church instead of a Catholic church. The fact that none of her family was present was a clear indication that they disapproved of the union. The ceremony was quick, with only two witnesses, Anna Covell, a parishioner, and Peter de Sisto, Mary's husband. In the same town where his first wife was buried, Sam Antonio recorded on the marriage license that this was his first marriage. Clearly, this was not an oversight, and his reason for doing this is a mystery. But more disturbing is the fact that he recorded Anna's age as 19 when, like his first wife, she was in fact 16 years old. The newlyweds made their home in Walcott with Sam's parents. The family farm on Clyde Road had been sold, and the elderly Antonios had moved to Walcott to be near Mary and Peter de Sisto. On September 9, 1924, Anna gave birth to her first child. She was christened Phyllis, an Americanization of Felicia, to honor Sam's mother. For a while, it appeared that the couple would remain in the western part of the state. However, in 1927, Sam came home and suddenly announced that with his recent promotion to brakeman with the railroad, they would be moving to Albany. By the 1920s, the Italians were the largest ethnic group in the city of Albany. It didn't take long for families to settle in and occupy apartments that spread from Phillips Street by Madison Avenue to Broadway Street and from 2nd Avenue to Van Zant Street, give or take a street or two. Here was Albany's Little Italy. It was here that Italian men sought out pick-and-shovel jobs or any work where their minimal skills could be put to use. And it was on Grand Street, for example, where their wives made their way through bakeries, meat markets, and vegetable stands. It was in Little Italy that they escaped the prejudice of the outside world. They spoke their own language, kept alive their old world traditions, and worked hard to support their families. For Anna, the move to Albany would be almost as if she had relocated back to J Street in Schenectady. With little Phyllis in tow, Anna left the quiet rural surroundings of western New York and returned to city life. They settled into an apartment on 101 Clinton Avenue, remaining there for about two years. From there, it was one move after another. In ten years, they had moved in and around the city of Albany eight times. <laughs>